on FM, online and digital radio. BBC Sussex. 7.13, we're talking about a subject this morning which is definitely a hot topic locally at the moment, the proposed changes to subsidised bus services. East Sussex County Council says it's had to reduce some services and increase some fares as a result of cuts in government funding. The council held a 12-week consultation earlier this year, currently reviewing more than 3,500 responses it received before making any final decisions. Meanwhile, campaigners fighting to save their buses are making their voices heard. High-profile campaign in the Hastings and Rye area, and today there's a rally and march in Lewis. It's an issue we've been following closely here on BBC Sussex in recent weeks. Let's just remind ourselves of some of the views expressed so far. They have to make choices. I understand that. But the fact is, I think this is the wrong choice because I think it's much more important to local residents than they realise. Inevitably, they've looked around for other areas to cut. And I'm afraid bus services, not particularly rural bus services, tend to be top of the list. The bus companies I've spoken to are not happy with the county council and the way this slash and burn consultation has been brought forward. It seems to me to be just a, a desktop exercise to, uh, which will cause immense damage to my constituents. This is going to cause major problems, particularly to the rural areas, particularly to late night buses. We're going to end up with people being isolated, young people unable to get to anywhere in the evenings. And we're going to end up with, uh, with more people tra- travelling on the roads, the opposite of the tra- in cars, the opposite of the transport policy we actually wanted this country. 91% of people will see no change to the services that they receive in terms of bus using, and in 95% will still have access to a six-day-a-week service. And let's be absolutely clear as well, Norman Baker has, has accused the bus operators of being dissatisfied. I've heard nothing of that, and in fact what I can tell you is we're going to be negotiating very robustly with those bus providers, and that some of these previously uh, supported services could be commercial viable and it's likely that some of those services will be commercially viable. It's going to mean people perhaps changing the pattern in the way that they use their bus services and, and, and even the dial ride, yes that will be reduced significantly to two times a week as per proposed but this is something that's been worked through with a cross-party reference group with members of all parties. A collection of voices there that we've heard in the past on both sides of the argument. Let's talk to David Nicholson from Lewis Stop the Cuts, who is one of the organisers of today's protests. Morning to you, David. Good morning. Why, why are you doing what you're doing today? Well, we're doing what we're doing because uh, we want to stand up for vulnerable people. Talking about 91 and 95 percent gives a, um, um, a totally false impression of the kind of stories that we've been getting from people. Um, you know, the, the council has a pledge to cater for vulnerable people. Um, transport needs to be be provided to doctor's surgeries, um, two hourly services at the moment only just provide access to outpatient um, departments at, at Victoria Hospital, for instance, and uh, dental appointments in Lewis. The council also has a duty to reduce the number of young people who are not in education, employment and training, and this is going to, to isolate them. It'll have a severe impact on the future of young people and their future prospects. Um, also, there is something called a Lewis District core plan, and um, this is linked together with, uh, with affordable and social housing. I mean, how can you have people, poorer people, living in an area uh, when they can't get any public sure. transport? But if, if, if the, if, I mean, if, if the buses were full, or even anywhere near full, presumably they wouldn't look. I mean, we, we're talking about this 9% of yeah, bus we're not, services. We're not, talking about, we're not talking about commercial viability here. We're talking about providing the basis for a fair and just society. But are, are there other ways of offering that service? You know, for example, you know, these kind of buses where you, where you almost ring and book it, but it's cheaper. To, to pay for taxes, wouldn't it? Yes, in some but then places? again, you have the accent on the cheapness, don't you? I mean, these cuts are not necessary, and they will have a substantially negative impact. You know, we've had testimonies from people here saying, uh, horrified to hear that this service may be cut to two hourly. Uh, two hourly service is vital for shopping, doctors, dentist appointments in Lewis. I would hate to think that more people will use their cars. This is the other thing that ESCC has signed up to okay. a green agenda to reduce carbon emissions. How, how can they reduce carbon emissions when they're cutting the buses, which will inevitably result in more cars? I mean, I'm, play- I'm playing devil's advocate here, but, my, are, but, yes. but my, my, my mother recently, for example, has just moved. A big move after 40 years in a house, yes. and she has moved to somewhere. She's moved into a town centre. She's moved to a flat in a town 
town centre because she said, I need to be, I know I'm getting older and I need to be near bus routes. I'm not saying people have to necessarily move house, but there are different ways of go- going about things we, when, when money is tight. Well, this is just like the bedroom tax, isn't it? This is saying, let's move people to accommodation that doesn't exist or to accommodation which is so uh, expensive okay. that it's only affordable by stockbrokers. You know, we've got to get real here. I'm also on the tenants of Lewis District and I know about the, the situation with council housing. That kind of accommodation doesn't exist. And why should people be forced to move, um, you know, when large amounts of money are being sent, spent, for instance, on the Hastings Link Road, All which right. would be much better spent on, um, pr- on keeping vital bus services. Tell us about today's protest. What sort of level of support do you think you'll have today? Well, we, we want as many people to, uh, as possible to come down to the, to the Lewis Precinct at 11 o'clock. We've got our transport specialist, Chris Smith, who's going to be talking, as he did at our very well-attended public meeting in the Westgate Chapel. We're then going to read out stories from people that we've collected in our, uh, in our two weekly stalls in Lewis Precinct about the negative impact of the buses. And then we're going to ask for contributions from the floor, from people who are there. And we've built a large, uh, a large bus, which is um, painted red, and we're going to take that up to County Hall, and we're going to leave our protests there, and we're going to be photographing it and putting it out through, through various news channels, including right. yours, of course. And uh, Indeed. And, and just in a sentence, are you confident, are you really confident that you can stop these cuts from happening? Will Lewis stop the cuts? We, we've got to stop this cut. It's vital for people. You know, people are hidden away. There are four food banks in Lewis, so you've got people who can't eat. And now, you're, and now you've got a, a tremendous impact on people who just can't get around. Not everyone, you know, drives a Land Rover Discovery, um, you know, and is able to spend 10 or £15 pounds on their lunch right. um, in, in, in Lewis. David, thank you for your time thank this morning. You. Thank you. I hope uh, your protest uh, goes well from your point of view today. David Nicholson from Lewis, Stop the Cuts. What do you make of what you've just heard? Is a local bus service a priority for you? Do you understand why the council needs to look at the services? And if the buses are running at empty or near empty, do they have to go? 03459 570057. Particularly keen to hear from you if you're directly affected by this. Are you a local bus user? What's it going to mean if your bus service is cut? June in Newhaven on the subject of buses and whether or not we can afford to keep all the rural routes running and that is the argument that is going on whether or not some routes, the underused ones need to be cut as part of cost saving measures. I've said it before and I'll say it again says June in Newhaven if pensioners can pay just a pound one way and a pound the other way back then that should surely help Do you agree? 03459 570057 Uh, Pensioners who have disabilities never went on bus rides before bus passes and you should see the faces and hear the chatter of the local pensioners here in Hailsham says Pauline they meet each other on that town bus and for some it gives them a reason to go out so no to charging is her message do you agree that maybe the introduction or the cancellation effectively of a universal free bus pass could be the way forward 03459 570057 Let's get your BBC News at 8 from Catherine Langley. Good morning. Campaigners against proposed cuts to bus services in East Sussex are holding a rally in Lewis today. It's being organised by Lewis Stop the Cuts. Protesters are meeting in the precinct at 11 before marching to County Hall. East Sussex County Council's Cabinet is expected to consider the proposed changes at a meeting next month. David Nicholson is from Lewis Stop the Cuts. He says it'll affect the most vulnerable members of the community. The Council has a pledge to cater for vulnerable people. Transport needs to be provided to doctor's surgeries. Two hourly services at the moment only just provide access to outpatient at Victoria Hospital, for instance, and uh, dental appointments in Lewis. The council also has a duty to reduce the number of young people who are not in education, employment and training, and this is going to, to isolate them. It'll have a severe impact on the future of young people and their future prospects. We are talking today about the future of local bus services, campaigners fighting to save them in uh, Lewis in particular and across East Sussex, gathering today later for a protest. East Sussex County Council says it's having to reduce some services and increase some fares as a result of cuts in government funding. The council held a 12-week consultation earlier this year and is currently reviewing the 3,506 responses that it received before making any final decisions. Or campaigners then fighting to save 
their buses are making their voices heard. We've already known about a high-profile campaign in the Hastings and Rye area. And today there's a rally in March in Lewis. And earlier on this programme, I spoke to David Nicholson from Lewis Stop the Cuts, the group organising today's protest. We want as many people to, uh, as possible to come down to the, to the Lewis precinct at 11 o'clock. We've got our transport specialist, Chris Smith, who's going to be talking as he did at our very well-attended public meeting in the Westgate Chapel. We're then going to read out stories from people that we've collected in our, uh, in our two weekly stalls in Lewis Precinct about the negative impact of the buses. And then we're going to ask for contributions from the floor, from people who are there. And we've built a large, uh, a large bus, which is um, painted red. And we're going to take that up to County Hall. And we're going to leave our protests there. And we're going to be photographing it and putting it out through, through various news channels, including right. yours, of course. Well, let's talk now live on the programme to Lewis Town Councillor Stephen Catlin. Morning to you. Hi. What's the strength of feeling like? Oh, people are very angry about the unlimited number of cuts. I mean, there is undoubtedly going to be rural deprivation, rural isolation. As it is, students at the college cannot engage in extramural activities because there is no transport home for them. What the county has forgotten is that buses weave communities together as well as simply transporting people. They help to combat loneliness and problems associated with it. They enable people to access experiences and help to redress basic inequalities. Down on the Lamport estate, there are 900 people, elderly, some disabled, a lot of young mothers with, with, uh, with young children, they, they're stuck without these services. And because uh, the 2829 to Tunbridge Wells and Uckfield is regarded as a commercial service, don't think that won't suffer cuts as well, because north of Lewis, the route is subsidised, which could well mean an earlier finish for buses to Uckfield and Tunbridge Wells. Every public organisation, well, you know this in the job you're doing, every public organisation, I know from the BBC to the health service, every one of those public organisations is having to make really tough decisions. What do we not do in the future? How can we save money? Buses can't be exempt, can they? Uh, you have a very valid point, but how much do we have to cut before we cease to exist altogether? Central government cuts the money available to local authorities. I don't notice any great cuts and suffering among the people who work for central government in London. It is the rural communities who will suffer, and we have to address this problem in another way. We must stop saying we can't afford it, therefore it can't happen, we must say, this is what must happen, how may we best afford it? Uh, a lot of people are getting in touch this morning, uh, and, and I have to tell you, not everybody in agreement on this, but, but uh, the more the majority are saying, Lee, for example, from the Lamport Estate has called, he says he wouldn't mind paying more as long as the service was kept. And, uh, and we've had pensioners saying, actually, I can afford, not every pensioner can, but I can personally afford to pay for my bus fare, even if it was a pound a day for travel right across the county. Is it time for a bigger approach to how we deal with this problem in the future? In other words, do we look, for example, at whether or not we can really afford free bus travel? I think we need to take a wider look at things. I think the consultation carried out has been very narrow. It, it accepts that those participating expect there to be cuts. There are other ways of doing it. Why not suggest to Brighton and Hove buses, for example, that they run some of the more rural routes in addition to the prime commercial ones and reduce their profit a little. Okay, so interesting, that, interesting they question have a more for them. Altruistic approach to transport across Sussex. Well, the, 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 they, of course, are a private company, and they say, "Look, you know, in the fairness, we're, we're here to make money." And, the, and then we go back to the government uh, subsidy. You know as well as I do, they're a multinational company. All right, they're uh, also involved with Southern Railway and things like that. So let, let's not cry too many crocodiles <laughs> for them. All right, uh, well, we'll let them defend themselves. Maybe they'll come on another time. Thank you for your time this morning, Stephen Catlin, our local town councillor. Let's have a word with Deborah Twitchen, who's got in touch with this morning. You are a bus user, aren't you? 
Yes, I am. Um, hello, good morning. Um, I'm also chair of the Lamport Residents Association, and I'm also chair of the Tenants of Lewis District organisation. So, um, you know, we represent an awful lot of tenants. And I can't imagine you're going to come on here and tell me, do you know what, actually, it's OK if they get rid of these services. <laughs> you're quite right there. No, I mean, we are appalled on Lamport as, as to the extent that they're trying to cut our buses. Um, you know, as Stephen said before you, I know Stephen very well, and uh, as he said, um, <laughs> you know, there are a lot of elderly people on this estate. There are a lot of young mums with children, and, and also there are, there are just, it's a very wide mixed um, people on this estate, and there are an awful lot of people without cars at all. Uh, we're very cut off down here. We're, we're sort of a little bit out of Lewis. It's about a 20 minute walk into Lewis from here. Um, in the winter, when the weather is appalling, you really honestly can't expect people to be waiting around for an hour at a time for a bus. And do you know what? I mean, if I lived in a very rural area, I would, I would probably be saying exactly the same thing. Keep as many buses as you possibly can. But you get the point that I'm making, that if you were in charge of the budget, and the budget is being cut and cut and cut again, you have to look at it and go, where on earth do we make these savings? It's a difficult job, isn't it? I I appreciate what you're saying, and it is a very difficult job for them, I'm sure. But why does it always seem to be that people that are vulnerable have to suffer in these situations? But they're saying 91% of services won't be affected at all. So, and I get the fact that 9% will be, but actually all they're saying is, look, you know, if buses are running empty or practically empty, you and I know that if these bus routes were were full or, or near to full, they wouldn't be touching them, would they? But what what are people supposed to do? You know, at the end of the day, if people have a hospital appointment at Haywards Heath, for instance, from Lewis, from this estate, it's very, very difficult for them to get there. People are being asked not to put so much pressure on the NHS, for instance. Mm. You know, um, these, these services are vital for people that have no cars. And, and do you get a sense, just finally, I know time is short, but do you get a sense that people would be prepared to pay more? I mean, obviously not everyone can afford it, but uh, somebody who's on your estate has called in and said, look, I'll pay more if it keeps the service there. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I, that is the sort of general gist of it. And, and I think, you know, we, we're right to start looking at things like taking away the free bus pass per se. Um, and, and start thinking about perhaps just giving that to people who really can't afford it. Mm. And then perhaps that would bring more money in and we'd be able to keep the services we have. I have a feeling we'll be back on this subject again very soon. Deborah, thank you for calling in. You're welcome. Appreciate your time this morning. Deborah Twitchin there, uh, who lives in Lewis. Good morning. Campaigners say they're determined to stop proposed cuts to bus services in East Sussex. Protest group Lewis Stop the Cuts is holding a rally in Lewis this morning from 11 before marching to County Hall. And how apt and appropriate that you're requesting songs of bus stops today because we are talking about the future of local bus services, particularly in East Sussex. Big rally taking place, as we've been hearing about in Lewis later on today. A lot of your comments coming in on what to do with regard to whether or not we should indeed scrap some of the more rural bus services, whether we can justify the expense anymore. Brenda says, uh, Morning Mark, what a shame we can't have some of those millions paid to Europe for our buses and our awful roads. Uh, Malcolm, I would ask the councillors who are making these decisions to put their cars away for a month and use public transport, then they could speak with understanding. Uh, Rachel in Bexhill. Sorry, if pensioners can afford to pay, then don't use the bus pass. It's so easy. That's another solution potentially there, whether or not you actually look at the future of uh, providing free bus travel for all people over the age of 65. And Emily is in Ringma. Morning, Emily. Good morning. Are you a bus user? I am, yes. Okay, how important is your local bus? Well... They're very important. These cuts are short-sighted, and the cost to East Sussex and uh, the rural communities are huge. It's surely a damaging message for local authority to be dissuading people away from public transport. Employment and the economy will uh, suffer. People work irregular hours through necessity or to maintain a family life. And many adults rely on social care provided by people on low wages. How will people be able to provide essential care without a means to reach us? And I'm also concerned about the youth disengagement this will cause and the economic and social costs through antisocial behaviour. It is interesting the point, just to pick up on that, that a lot of people talk about, uh, you know, the more elderly folk who, who maybe don't drive. That, that's the other end of the, of, of the scale here. It's, it's the, younger, the younger people as well who rely on buses. Absolutely, and, and especially, you know, in, in all our rural communities, you're just going to have so many children 
and young adults who just have got nowhere to go, no social life. I know people see a social life as, as, an, as an extra, but I think for young people, that's not the case. And, and they're going to be, you know, kicking around outside the local shopping precincts uh, with nothing sure. to do, rather than going off to clubs and activities. And, and just um, in, in, just in a word, would you, would you pay more, Emily, if you had to? Would you pay more to keep your bus? I would, yeah. You would. All right, Emily, thank you. Appreciate your call. Uh, nice to hear from you this morning. And Andrew Boag from Brighton Area Bus Watch, he's been in touch this morning, says the number of people travelling by bus in East Sussex has gone up by 20% in the last five years. Buses are more important than ever, he says. Ridiculous to think about cutting services at this time. Thank you for all your contributions on that. Uh, of course, we will return to that subject in the weeks and months ahead.